I got a different type of video here today. I just found this cool effect from a friend of mine on the forum, and it's called the twirl effect. Uh, there's a bunch of videos and tutorials on the web on how to do it, and I watched a few of them, checked out a couple, and uh, came up with what I think is the best way to do it, at least, at least to get cool effects pretty consistently. And I figured I'd share it with you. It's going to be a quick video. So this is what the image looked like to start with, and this is the result. So you can see it's quite amazing. Uh, you can create these cool abstract, you know, results. Uh, and I'm actually using it as a desktop screensaver right now. And I'm kind of happy with it. It's cool. It's fun to look at. Uh, very interesting colors and whatnot. So let me, uh, let me show you how it's done. And like I said, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. So I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way to do it. And, you know, the, the most powerful way to do it. Step one is going to be go down here to your layers and right click and convert to smart object. That'll allow you to apply filters and then be able to edit them after the fact. You don't have to do it that way. You can just leave it as a layer and do your manipulations to it, but uh, then you won't be able to change them after the fact. So that's the advantage of creating this as a smart object as opposed to just leaving it as layers and duplicating layers, for example. Oh, and by the way, you don't want this necessarily to be the highest resolution image. If I go to image size here, you can see it's 2,500 pixels. Somewhere around there is pretty good. I mean, you could go bigger. It's just going to take a little bit longer for it to render, depending on the speed of your machine. So this is a new laptop I got here, so it's working pretty darn fast. Um, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So anyways, step one, you're going to go to Filter, and then you're going to go to Pixelate and Mezio Tint. And you could also try other options here. You don't have to do this one, but this one seems to work pretty good. And I seem to like medium strokes the best. And you can see what it does. It creates this weird effect, like lines across it. And that will basically give you the streaks that you end up with here. All the individual streaks, these lines kind of turn into that in the end. So you can see here what color spectrum we're going to have to work with as well. It changes the color of the image. And these colors are going to be in the end result pretty much. And you can enhance them, of course. So. Second step we're going to do is we're going to go to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur, all right? And the amount here, I'm going to go up to 100, and then you're going to go to Zoom, okay? And the quality of good is fine, so I'm just going to click OK. And you can see that's where you get that cool, like, you know, perspective effect where it looks like it's zooming, you know, like, like high speed or something. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to do that again a few times. So if you go to Filter, Radial Blur, it's right here at the top because you just used it. Or you can do Shift-Command-F if you're using a Macintosh. I'm just going to click OK. And now you can see it smooths out quite nicely. I'm just going to do it one more time. And you can see the lines as well. See these lines? Now the trick is we're going to uh, make it twist. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Filter, Distort, and then we're going to do Twirl. That's why this is called the Twirl Effect. Now, how you do this is you kind of do it once one way and once the other way. So I'm going to start with negative 100. That seems to work quite well. You can change that value, of course. I'm just going to do negative 100, though, like so. All right. And then if you click on this layer here over on the right, you can change the blending mode. So I'm going to change the blending mode to lighten. And then that gives you this. See now how it looks like it's blending? And it gives you quite a cool effect. So I'm just going to do another one now. I'm going to do Filter, Twirl, and I'm going to do it the other way. So I'll do 100, and it's going to do it the opposite direction. Click OK, and now you can see I got pretty much my resulting image. As you can see, it's pretty close. I just have to enhance the colors now and the contrast and stuff. But the basic concept is there. All right. So now what you can do is you can go here to the adjustment layer here, and I'm just going to go to Curves. And we'll just drag this up a little bit. And I just like to bring the blacks down a touch. And then over here, you bring the highlights up a little bit. And you can see that enhances the contrast quite nicely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another adjustment layer. I'm going to do vibrancy. And I'm going to jack the vibrancy up, like so. Then I'm going to go and add another adjustment layer. And I'm going to do color balance. 
And here is where you can enhance the colors a little bit and manipulate the way they look. So for example, I could drag this to the red or the blue. See that? So I'm going to drag it a little bit to the red. I like the way that looks. And then this slider, you can go green or magenta. And I, in my case, I'm going to go to magenta. That's making my image look cooler in my mind. And of course, this is totally subjective, guys. You can go left or right. See, yellow looks cool, but blue also looks cool. You can go either way. I kind of tended towards the blue, though, because I, I like the way that this gradient of blues looked over here and on this side, like that. And then you can select highlights and shadows, and you could manipulate it further, like so. Kind of like that one. And you can go yellow if you want for the highlights, or more towards blue. And like I said, I kind of like the blue there. And you can see it's pretty close to what I had here. Not exact, but pretty close. And you get a slightly different result every time you do this. And, you know, it's fun. So we can go back to Layer, and we could add another twirl. So we can go to Filter, Twirl. And this time I'm going to go to negative 156. And I'm going to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to do negative 150. I'll just do negative 150. Click OK. And you can see how cool that looks. If you want to click on this thing on the right, that allows you to change the blending mode. So I'm going to change that to Lighten. And now you can see you got, it's got even more stuff going on here. And this second layer of Twirl, I don't believe I changed the blending mode on that. Let me just check. Now that's set to Normal, so let me change that to Lighten. And move this to the side. And you can also try other blending modes, like Soft Light. You can see that makes it much darker. And you could lower the opacity if you want of that layer. But Lighten seems to work the best um, from my experience with this. And click OK. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you can get you know, such a cool, fun effect like this. You want to create a desktop background, or you just feel like playing with photos and you're trying to kill some time. This is a fun way to do it. And uh, this is what it started as. And you can see as I go through here, you end up with this. So, you know, something fun to do. And uh, I hope you enjoy if you're looking for uh, something to do in Photoshop to kill some time or, or, like I said, just create a cool desktop background. So in any event, I will catch up with you guys later. And please have a wonderful day.